Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. We have several reviews to get to and also a special announcement at the end of this video, but first we're gonna jump into reviews. The first figure in this episode for us to look at is a female pit fighter from the P65 line. This is a single piece miniature that is carrying a mace in her right hand and what looks like to be almost like a, a punch dagger in her left hand, but it's got two blades on it, so it does look a little bit different than normal. Her headdress really stands out on the figure. It almost looks or makes me think of an Aztec or Mayan warrior, something from South America in, in our real history, but that's just what it looks like or makes me think of. The figure is sculpted in a pretty dynamic pose where it looks like she's just swung through one enemy with her mace and has put her sights on another one that she's about to run towards. Cleaning was limited to a little bit of extra metal down on her left leg from the casting process and one very visible but pretty thin mold line up on her right thigh. So not a whole lot of cleaning and not a whole lot of time you're going to have to spend on it before you can prime it and get to painting. For me, I'm not sure that I would drop her into a Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game, but in D&D or Pathfinder or any kind of high fantasy game, I think she would do well as a very alternative looking female fighter. Next up we have a male mad scientist from the Savage Worlds line. This is a single piece figure and you can see that he's carrying two devices, I guess you'd call them, one in each hand. In his left hand he has a smaller device, probably about the size of a, a dagger, and then in his right hand he's got a rather large device that ends in a orb at the top of it. So some kind of electrical weapon is what I'm guessing here. The head and face of the figure really stands out for me. He has sort of a wild-eyed crazy scientist look with his hair all disheveled and mussed up so I think that really draws a lot of good attention to the model. Now, one thing that you want to be careful of is the orb on top of the larger weapon in his right hand uh, without really even messing with it at all. I wasn't trying to do anything but I broke it straight off and had to glue it back on. So just be careful with that when you're cleaning up the figure. As far as uses outside of a Weird West game, I think you could drop him into any kind of superhero game as an evil mad scientist bent on the destruction of the world and he's carrying his devices with him that he's going to use against the heroes. You could put him into a sci-fi game. He's just uh, a scientist looking guy, so I think he'd fit fine right there. And if you wanted to do some conversions, clip the hands off and put something in place of the electrical devices, that would really be a pretty easy conversion. So I think you've got uh, quite a few uses out of this figure here. Next up we have a figure from the Chronoscope line. This is Morao. I think that's how you probably want to pronounce it. He's a Tigarian mercenary and it's pretty obviously a sci-fi figure. He's carrying a power axe and then has some grenades on his belt. You can see a holster that has a pistol over on his right side and I think immediately of the large feline race from Traveler. I believe they were called Aslans and that's obviously more lion based and this is a Tigerian, so I guess tiger based figure here but I think you could use it in that role just perfectly. It is a two-piece figure with the axe and the hands and part of the left arm separate from the rest of the body so a little bit of time you'll need to put into putting it together and cleaning the model. I found no real significant mold lines. There were a few faint ones but nothing that wasn't easily smoothed away. Now on the particular model that I got there was a slight defect and you can see it up at the top of his head going from his left eye towards the back of the head there is a crack in the model itself or a crack in the head. This will easily be filled in with putty. All I would say to you if you're going to pick one up is when you're in the store just make sure the blister pack you're looking at doesn't have any kind of crack or anything like that. I think this is just a, a once in a, a while fluke that I got this one. Now if you wanted to you could very easily convert the figure into more of a ranged fighter or close range fighter by clipping off the axe and putting two laser pistols in his hands. I think the pose and the the way the figure looks would still be just fine if he had two pistols. One, his right one, would be kind of coming around the, the side of his head a little bit, but maybe he's just rearing back and roaring before he starts blazing away. So I think that'd look okay, or you could just leave it as it is. And then last for us to take a look at in this episode is Akar Nakal, a pharaoh dragon. And this is a large multi-piece figure. And let's go ahead and try to get it out of the blister here. Instead of cutting it out, 
I think we might have more luck just tearing the blister pack open, but we'll see how that goes. It's in a double blister card, so it's got two cards, and then it's in a large blister, as you can see here, as we try to muscle our way into it and dump the pieces out. There's the tail. And here's all the bits. Now, first thing is you get a large round base. It's a decorative base. You have two places where the feet go, but otherwise, this could be a really good looking base for a, a war jack for war machine or something like that. And then you've got the bony wings here. And here's the other one. and then lots of pieces that go into making the miniature itself. This is the main part of the body. It has a breastplate and a bony structure of the body. And let's get all these organized a little bit. Here's the tail, large bony tail with a sort of thrusting weapon on the end of it or a bladed end of it. And then we've got some arms and legs, and actually that's an arm. Here's two legs right and left and then a carapace section looks like an extra armored back plate section or, fr or front plate section of the model and then the two arms and then you've got a lower part of the jaw and the upper part of the head and you're gonna have to clip it off and put it together uh, well, sort of something like that. All right, so that's all the pieces of the figure. And just from looking at all the parts, you can tell that it's going to require a decent amount of assembly and cleaning. Nothing unusual for a model this size. But once it's put together, it look really dynamic and I think eye-catching on the tabletop. I think also that if you wanted to use it as an alternate Necrolith Colossus, or what used to be a Bone Giant, in a Tomb King's army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. You could really do well and have a really outstanding piece on the tabletop that's unique and would really help the army stand out. Okay, and that will end our reviews for this episode. And on to my announcement for Reaper Minis TV. And that is, this will be my final episode of Reaper Minis TV. Now, I've been making the videos for two years now and had a great time doing it. Got to talk to a lot of great people online, got to talk about one of the games I like a whole lot, that being Warlord, and figure lines that I really, really like, and that's pretty much everything that comes out from Reaper. But I've got some other personal commitments that are requiring more of my time. So, like I said, this will be my final episode of Reaper Minis TV. However, this doesn't need to be the end of the channel. I'm turning everything over to Gus Lant, and he works for Reaper. His email is gus at reapermini.com. And if you, somebody out in the community, would like to take over the duties of Reaper Minis TV, what you'll need to do is get a hold of Gus. Like I said, his email is gus at reapermini.com. You'll need to obviously have access to a video camera, the time and ability to make the videos. So if that's you, definitely get a hold of Gus and you guys can talk about it. My thanks go out to everybody at Reaper for supporting this effort over the past two years. Now, there's lots of people that work at Reaper, and uh, I know I'll forget somebody, but uh, I have thanks definitely going out to Ed Pugh, head honcho guy at Reaper. Ron Hawkins has always been a great guy. Uh, Gus, obviously, he's in game development at Reaper and has really helped me out. And also, very big thanks to Brian Stiltz. He's the guy who guided us on our tour at ReaperCon and has always been a real stand-up guy. So thanks to everybody at Reaper, and also thanks to everybody out there on YouTube who has watched Reaper Minis TV, who had nice things to say about the channel. Just thanks to all of you out there, and good gaming to everybody.